Hi there guys and welcome back to another FPV guy video. As you know, I'm Paul Lorenzen and this week I'm at the Interdrone 2017 show here in Las Vegas at the Rio Hotel. And I'm walking around and looking for stuff that I would want to use. And I'm gonna about to be begging Tim, Mr. Tim Crabtree for, for of the Eureka co company here. I'm gonna be begging him for one of these locators because you know that I frequently test new drones. And one of the worst things when I test the drone is I'm gonna put up this aircraft I've never seen before and I'm gonna drive it out in the desert so I'm always trying to stay over a dirt track or something so if it does go down, I kind of know where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna follow the That'd trail. Be good. Yeah. What he has here is a passive locator it's called the Macro Polo, and that this basically attaches to your aircraft. It has a dongle antenna here, but it goes to sleep when it gets sent out. And right. then when you engage the search system, Good it then taps this on, wakes it up, and it starts plinging you, and you can search up to two miles. Yes. What it means is, now when I do ditch out in the desert this untested aircraft, because some of them have done this, and it's taken me days, yeah, I turn this thing on, I open the doors, yep. and then I can just kind of point myself towards it. Yes, it's a homing system. It presents an arrow that points you right to where your drone is. And it gets more and more accurate as you get closer. If you're not watching where you're going, you will step on the drone. So, so this is this is basically a directional antenna. These barn doors. Here. Yes, there's four antennas in here. It's a pseudo Doppler system, like the old low jack uh, okay. stolen vehicle recovery systems, but it's a handheld 900 megahertz Doppler. Okay, and 900 megahertz means it has a ton of range to it. Yes. What's the legalities in the 900 megahertz range? Well, that's the ISM band. Uh, we're fully, you know, FCC and Industry Canada qualified, so um, it's it's an open band for anyone who uh, presents their products to the FCC for qualification. And you started this originally to find your lost phantom. <laughs> He's laughing. The reason I'm asking is because, guys, that's a dog. Yes. No. I originally <laughs> found it to, to find your lost dog. I know a girlfriend that needs one of these. <laughs> yeah. The same system works with the dog tracking collars or with the ultralight, which are the 12 gram versions of the Marco Polo RC tracker, and the advanced RC tracker, which is a 23 gram waterproof and crush proof. And of course, if you do crash this into a lake, there's no radio reception. Right. If it goes deep in the water, you're going to have to be right over the top of it to get any radio reception. But you know what happens often? Someone will crash late in the day. It's too late to go out into the forest. It's getting dark, so they have to go home. And then if it rains at night, your tracker may not work the next day. And that's actually an interesting thing. So when you when we start this flight, we're going to push the power button? Yes. You put the, uh, the tracker, this is on a P3. This is just uh, attached with Velcro right here. You turn it on, and it will stay in a standby mode for up to two weeks. So I have two weeks to come back out on site and start looking for this thing. Exactly. Right. And when this is in the standby mode, it does not transmit anything. Okay. It doesn't transmit any RF power on any frequency. So, so that's so, basically what allows it to be listening for two weeks. That's right. And also, it guarantees it's not going to interfere with any other radios you have on your drone. Regardless of the type of drone you have, it's only cycling its receiver periodically to listen for a signal from the handheld. So when I pop this open, this starts emitting a signal that engages this. Yes. yes. So, so, and that's really a big thing because if you are say 5,000 meters out, the radio on the aircraft is listening for a very faint control signal from my controller. Yes. So if you had a radio source on board the aircraft, that would definitely drown out my controller. It could, yes, absolutely. It would, even if it's in a different band, it could reduce the sensitivity of the controller. So the. And, and I like, I'm glad I ran into you because a lot of people are putting USB 
tiles on the drones. Yeah, Bluetooth, yeah. Yeah, it works at a couple hundred feet in ideal conditions. What a great thing. What a great thing. Wind blowing the right way. Yes. And right. And, and I've seen this and I've been arguing that a lot. I mean, because USB or Bluetooth transmitters are just not a 10 mile system. Right. This one can get you in there if it's even 10 miles out if you know about where it went. Right. Because you can start driving down that direction where you know it is and you can start opening it Looking for about five, ten minutes. If you haven't found it yet, try to move a little further down. Yeah, yeah. We call it searching by driving around. And if you put this, oh, that's a technical term. <laughs> it is. Yeah, you hear the beep tones? Yes. You can put this on the car seat next to you and put it in search mode. And when you get within range of the drone, it's going to start beeping. So it's probably like this. better to put it in the dash of the window so you don't yeah, have metal around. Either way. And listen for the beep tones. It'll start beeping when it acquires the signal. It beeps once each communication for the longest distance, twice when you get closer, and three times when you're real close like we are now. So you guys already anticipated that this dark or airplane may be further than two miles away? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This is and two miles is, is somewhat the optimum range. If you're in the mountains, if you're in the deep forest, you're not going to get two miles of range. It's just like a walkie-talkie. The range is going to be uh, somewhat limited. Somewhat limited by those factors. But you know, it, it, the biggest competitors to Marco Polo are GPS cellular devices like Trackamo. They require a clear view of the sky for GPS reception and with GSM cellular reception. And, and that's really the big thing. If you're flying somewhere and the bloody thing crash lands in a little ravine or something yes. where you're not getting a cell phone signal or out in the desert where I like to fly and test right. stuff. There is no cell phone signal. Right. So you may as well put a rock on your on your drum. It's not and, and rocks are cheaper. <laughs> they are. <laughs> but but so what are we looking at here? This must be a thousand dollar product. Uh, not nearly. Um, the ultralight system is two hundred and twenty dollars for a complete system. And the advanced system, the waterproof pressure proof one, is two hundred and thirty five dollars for a complete system. And now I'm gonna Bring, bring your phantom back up here. Because one thing I noticed, and I've I've seen people show me installations with zip ties and whatnot, mm -hmm. and I noticed you're really just sticking it on with a bit of Velcro. Yes. And you earlier mentioned the only way people break these things is cranking it down with a zip tie. That can't happen, yeah. If you put it on a strut and you crank the zip tie down very tight, it can, it can but, damage but the battery. But what you guys got to keep in mind when it comes to the crank the zip tie method, it doesn't really matter. Right. Because if you crash this into a hill or some house or somewhere, even if this thing flies off, it's still operating. Yes. So it does, and if you go find this thing, this thing is going to be very close by. Yes, and because it has its own independent power source, even if it goes flying in a crash, it's still going to be operating. Yeah, and it's going to be very close to where they, they are both hitting the ground kind of the same place. Yes. And the, and it's a 900 megahertz, meaning it penetrates foliage it does. and grass very well. It does. Uh, 900 megahertz is used for ground penetrating radar, through the whole wall radar for law enforcement and so forth. It is a very penetrating technology. Yeah, I mean, unlike a 5.8 that you right. got two leaves and it stops. Right. So there you have it, guys. This is the Macro Polo. This is Tim Crabtree. And it's the Macro Polo for about $220. Yep. They are available today. Yes, they are. Dude, What's your website? Drone? It's uh, EurekaProducts.com. EurekaProducts.com. And just ignore the pictures of the dogs on there because <laughs> yes. these works on these dogs too. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, sir. You're welcome. Thank you.